a sigh of relief because nobody knew that it could have worked. It worked on the slide rules only, but it ended up working in fact. And there was a huge sigh of relief, and from the astronauts included, one would suspect. But even then, their mission, as it stands now, isn't over. It's 45 minutes between once you're down on the ground and when you leave the spacecraft. What are you doing, doing during that period? You, you wouldn't even believe it. We are uh, safe in every system in the air and shutting down things and conversing with the ground and bringing up the ground monitoring uh, system on a computer. And uh, Bob is doing most of that. Uh, and it involves uh, shutting off almost every uh, uh, piece of equipment in the vehicle and uh, so that the cooling doesn't over it. So it doesn't overheat, and uh, uh, it's uh, quite a bit of work. It's all switch throwing and, and safing in coordination with activity of the ground coming up, uh, making sure there's no leaks around the vehicle, putting the ground cooling to it, and uh, doing that kind of activity. It's it's just a pretty busy time. It's the main thing is that uh, there's a lot of heat built up into the vehicle in entry, and we only have about 15 minutes of cooling capability on board when we land under a nominal situation. So we're dependent upon the ground coming up and attaching a ground cooling cart to the vehicle so that they can supply cooling and then we can go ahead and turn off our internal systems. But as John said, it's primarily just safing and taking everything down. And 45 minutes now is a rough estimate of what it's, what it's been taking. Stick around. All right, those are astronauts Crippen and Young talking before they went up in the orbiter space shuttle about what was going on on board. They're in there right now, and they should be in there, oh, about another 20 minutes or so altogether. A lot of people will be counting dollars and cents on a day like today because the space shuttle costs altogether about $10 billion. Senator Proxmire of Wisconsin has been very critical of it. The day will come, according to NASA, that a launch will be so routine that the press and television won't even bother to cover it. NASA also claims that the day will come when a shuttle flight can be a commercial success. There are a lot of skeptics around about all that, but NASA is trying hard to convince them otherwise. Let us show you what they have in mind for the commercial success. Of the this is a blueprint of the future, according to NASA. It hopes that each of these neat figures represents a future shuttle mission, many of them completely sold out. The space agency is trying to give the impression that the shuttle program is a success before the first mission starts that NASA's phone is ringing off the hook with orders from governments, colleges, and industries. Well, that's not entirely true. The space salesmen still have a lot of tough selling to do. In one area, they have struck a bonanza, satellites. When the shuttle becomes operational in a year or two, as many as four satellites can be carried in a single orbiter. The plan is to use the shuttle's remote-operated crane to pluck the satellite out of the cargo hold, a radio signal can then trigger a solid fuel rocket, which will put the satellite into permanent orbit 22,000 miles above the Earth. NASA claims its satellite plan can be much cheaper than launching each satellite individually. What's more, the space agency says astronauts eventually can recover satellites, modify or repair them, and then return them to orbit. Now, when a satellite breaks, there's no way to fix it. So it's understandable that satellite companies and the governments and industries that use them are very interested. However, NASA's pitch to most American businesses about space manufacturing, forming metals and weightlessness, well, those pitches are being greeted skeptically. Industry says this is pure research, tough to sell to stockholders, very expensive to underwrite with no guarantee of profits. Eventually, of course, NASA would like to get the money for an orbiting space station, which would give the shuttles something to shuttle to. The space station could conduct many scientific experiments, and more importantly, it could be the nucleus of a permanent and growing presence in the heavens. Among other things, the space salesmen say, the station could be the manufacturing hub of a gigantic effort to catch the sun's rays on solar panels and beam that energy to Earth to be converted to precious electric power. That's a grand or grandiose concept, depending on your point of view. And even NASA dreamers can see there are many problems to be solved, not the least of which is the absence of money, even to put these dreams on paper. 
One of the things that uh, NASA believes will happen in the future is that something like the Columbia Orbiter, another version of the space shuttle, will go up and be able to retrieve satellites and repair them if necessary. Joe Kerwin, though, those communication satellites are up there 22,000 miles. This kind of uh, spacecraft only goes up about 600 miles. That's a pretty long reach. We That's think, not possible, is it? We think the time will come when a tug can chiefly be uh, uh, sent from the low orbit to the high orbit to retrieve a satellite and that the economics will be such that that's cheaper than launching a brand new expensive communications satellite uh, into the same orbit. But you'll also be launching what they call LEOs, low earth satellites, low orbit satellites. And many, many satellites we already have manifested that we launch in a low earth orbit and which then lift themselves to synchronous orbit. We have 40 flights manifested already. Big part of that military too, right? A, a smaller part than uh, most people think of, of the first 40 flights, about uh, 10, 10, 15 percent of them are military. John? Uh, they are now removing uh, bad and smelly things from the spacecraft. Uh, Old socks. <laughs> yes. Uh, no danger to anybody, but they're going through this carefully. Uh, if you're on the East Coast at about 5 to 10 minutes past 2, Eastern Standard Time, or here in California, 5 or 10 after 11 o'clock in the morning, we probably will see the astronauts. What will happen is Dr. Craig Fisher, who is Director of Medical S Operations uh, at the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston, is here. He will be the first person to enter the shuttle Columbia. He will be the first one to have a look at the astronauts. I must say they sound fun. They are giving no indication of any ill effects from their two days and six hours in space and their 36 orbits. In any case, Dr. Fisher will go in, have a quick look at them, and then they will come down and we will have a look at them from there. Uh, the shuttle out on the runway here at Edwards Air Force Base, they will then be taken to the dispensary. At the dispensary, they'll run some tests on them, and the astronauts will meet their families. After that, they will come to a VIP section here at Edwards Air Force Base, where they will probably, we think, and we hope, say a few words, and then, having been in space all that time, NASA is going to put them back on an airplane and fly them all the way back to Houston, Texas. These people are insane. <laughs> Uh, but in any case, they will have later today a press conference at the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston, and NBC will, uh, will be providing coverage of that as well. So that's what we've got coming up ahead of us, and the space shuttle itself will be towed over to a hangar, cleaned up, prepared for uh, its piggyback ride on the top of a 747 back to Cape Canaveral, and the shuttle program is underway. Joe, you must just be especially gratified about it. I certainly am. I remember years ago someone called the Apollo missions an act without consequence. Uh, I think what we've seen here today is an act with consequence, the I first of many to come. I think you're right. We'll be back with more coverage of the landing successful of the space shuttle after this. 176 statute miles out in space at speed sometimes 18,000 miles an hour. Now landing speed was just over uh, 300 miles an hour. The convoy team members are now getting washed down to remove any toxic chemicals from their protective suits. That's the ground crew members. Uh, John Young is now looking out of the hatch window. He hasn't opened that hatch yet, but he's looking out of the hatch window. And our CBS News coverage of the return of the Space Shuttle Columbia will continue after these messages. They were going to respond. It always seems to be that way in space travel and the re-entry. They've been on the ground for quite some time now, but we still have to wait for... Uh, I don't believe the doctor has gone aboard yet because they're not going to uh, open that hatch until they make sure that all the uh, potentially noxious fumes have been dispersed by the wind machine. The crew is, uh, is actually flying or controlling the spacecraft, but let me tell you, they are a captive audience. Uh, they are there to stay for the duration of that, uh, that fireball and that entry interface. And when they came out, John uh, sounded jubilant, and he sounded, of course, very professional. His first comments were something to the effect that uh, uh, everything went perfectly as advertised. And uh, uh, again, I think that's a tribute to the amount of training and time and confidence that they've had in what they've been doing. No question about it, Gene. Uh, <laughs> this isn't the sort of thing you do without uh, exhaustive training. And I think a great many people were struck by the fact that the day after the mission was uh, scrubbed, in Florida the other day, they were right back on their uh, pre-launch routine, out flying the, uh, the Gulf Streams to practice emergency landing procedures. 
Is there a tile missing there, Gene? Can you see uh, on the nose? It, uh, there's a dark spot that's yeah. circled on the screen right now, and it, it, it looks like it may very well be a tile. It's very difficult to tell from here at this point. It looks most like it might be a popped tile, Gene, a tile that popped up from the uh, adhesive fastening to the felt uh, that holds that holds it to the aluminum. Here skin. again, I would not be surprised to see a few tiles uh, uh, missing without any significant problems caused by the by those missing tiles. Obviously, the ones that were missing on the tail or the boat tail that we saw earlier that were lost during launch uh, caused no problems at all. That may have been a white tile too, uh, not black, which would not be a critical one. I uh, I think it does show that even if uh, one or two uh, does come off, that uh, the dreaded zipper effect did not take place. There had been that uh, concern, at least expressed by some, that uh, if one came off, why the rest would just, you know, uh, follow along. But obviously that didn't happen. You know,